so hello friends in this video we are going to start with endocrine system okay and in that first we will discuss about drugs which are used for diabetes mellitus so diabetes mellitus is of two types diabetes mellitus 1 and 2 diabetes mellitus 1 we are knowing insulin dependent and this is insulin independent okay in this beta cell destruction will be there so there will be decrease insulin decrease uh, release and in this insulin receptor become resistance okay so there is a concept of insulin re receptor resistance so glucose uptake decreases here now insulin is a anabolic hormone 51 amino acid is there two chains are there alpha and beta axon so two axon is mainly served with this it increases glucose uptake in tissue at also increases anabolic effect anabolic effect means glycogen storage protein synthesis muscle increasing muscle mass increasing gluconeogenesis decreasing gluconeogenesis decreasing ketogenesis okay so these are the anabolic effect and this is your increasing glucose uptake towards the tissues now there is two concept for administration of the insulin so insulin is required for two things the first one is peak requirement and the another one is basal requirement okay so peak requirement is after intake of any meal that is postprandial hyperglycemia to encounter this postprandial hyperglycemia and this basal requirement is uh, for 24 hours that is requirement for anabolic effect okay that is fasting blood sugar maintenance now glucose level in blood so fasting blood sugar normally less than 110 and in diabetes mellitus case more than 126 and postprandial hyperglycemia less than 140 and more than 200 getting and in between this is known as glucose intolerance that is pre-diabetic stage now so this is the basic introduction about the diabetes now we will talk about anti uh, diabetic drugs in which first we will discuss about insulin okay so mechanism of action is insulin binds to receptor present on skeletal muscle and that will cause activation of map kinase okay and that will cause transcription of uh, channels which are responsible for uptake of glucose from the plasma getting now coming to some introduction of the insulin so animal derived insulin is also there pork insulin beef insulin but side effects are that is they are they can induce hypersensitive reaction because they are animal derived so we have discussed we have uh, researched and we have developed modified animal insulin that is reducing the risk of hypersensitive reaction now we have developed genetic engineered insulin okay mrna from insulin we have made and that will lead to peptide synthesis okay that is also known as humanized dna insulin so there is no hypersensitivity reaction associated with this Right. now we will discuss about types of humanized DNA insulin so there are four types the first one is rapidly acting insulin onset of action is 15 to 20 minutes okay it is injected three times per day just before major meal breakfast okay lunch dinner now treatment of postprandial hyperglycemia because they are rapidly acting insulin duration of action is 3 to 4 hours o onset is 15 to 20 minutes and duration of action is 3 to 4 hours matches with the duration of stay of glucose in plasma after meal intake so having less risk of hypoglycemia getting it is manufactured in monomorph mono form okay rapidly acting insulin are manufactured in monomorph form and it is a contrasting feature with other hexamorph form other insulin are in hexamorph form okay and it is given through sub subcutaneous route, route okay now the insulin coming under this are glucelin glulicin okay aspart and lispro remember by this trick numerics gal getting the so, glulicin aspart and lispro clear now the second group of insulin is short acting insulin onset is 30 to 60 minute injected 30 to 45 minute before meal okay to control bph action is 4 to 6 hour insulin coming under this is regular insulin and semilente insulin okay it is given through subcutaneous route also through iv when there is emergency okay and this is this regular insulin is the only insulin which is given through iv route mind it this is the only insulin which is given through iv route regular insulin clear getting and this is I have fast onset and it is given in diabetic ketoacidosis through iv route and dose is 0.1 unit per kg clear now when we when we will in through subcutaneous route when we will increase dose okay that will increase its effect so more risk of hypoglycemia in high, high doses clear absorption is variable from subcutaneous route and it is also used for maintenance treatment of diabetes mellitus so regular insulin and semilente here we have discussed gal blue lysine aspart and lispro now coming to the intermediate acting insulin so onset is slow okay action is for 2 12 to 14 hours it includes two nph and lente nph is neutral protamine has on it is also known as isofen and this is the only insulin which is present in colloidal form in market okay this is the contrasting feature with the other insulin because other are transparent this is only insulin which are present in colloidal form clear isofen the next group is long acting insulin onset is slow duration of action is more than 18 hours more than 24 hours more than 18 hours include protamine zinc insulin and ultra linte and more than 24 hours include glargin and datamine okay glargin and datamine now it is also known as peakless insulin and also only insulin 
which is prepared in acidic pH. This glycogen is the only insulin which is prepared in acidic insulin. Okay, contrasting feature with other insulin. Other insulin is uh, manufactured at physiological pH. Getting so never combined with uh, any other insulin in same syringe because it can cause pre precipitation of insulin. Clear? Getting so this includes protamine, zinc insulin, ultra lente, then glycogen and date mir. Okay. The last group is mixer. Okay, in this we will mix regular insulin plus rapidly acting in this ratio and it is also known as mixed start. So this is the classification of insulin. Okay, so we have discussed about uh, four, five classification. The first was your rapidly acting insulin in which uh, we have discussed uh, three medicine, three group of insulin that is GL, that is glorycillin, okay, aspart and lispro, then short acting which we have discussed about two, uh, regular insulin and semilente. Then we have gone for intermediate in which NPH that is also known as isofen lente, then long acting protamine zinc insulin, ultra lente, and glargine and detemir. Okay, so this is your now we will discuss indication of insulin when we will um, give insulin. Okay, Ind indications of insulin. So the first indication is diabetes mellitus that is insulin dependent diabetes mellitus. Main therapy for this is insulin therapy. Okay, and now there are two patterns available for administration of insulin. Okay, there are two patterns I have shown in the diagram one pattern. Here. now this is the first pattern in which what we will do we will give insulin that is regular insulin okay sorry rapidly acting insulin at three times that is breakfast lunch and dinner you are seeing here breakfast lunch and dinner we have administered so rapidly acting insulin is given before three major food timing okay breakfast lunch and dinner at night long acting insulin is given at night we will give long acting insulin so this is for basal requirement okay so this is for basal requirement that is long acting insulin is given okay and in this pattern we have to care about diet okay we should not take diet in between breakfast and lunch in between lunch and dinner clear now second pattern in which we will combine rapidly or short acting with intermediate acting or long acting in this ratio or we can give lente or combine set short plus long in this ratio okay so second pattern is this here second pattern is represented we give rapidly or short acting during breakfast okay and along with it we also give intermediate or long acting so it has effect till dinner okay or you say lunch next lunch so in this you can take food between this period okay so this is the another pattern getting so this is the the other two patterns of insulin uptake now insulin requirement is 55 percent of the body weight so for 70 kg we have to give 38 unit per day okay like this before breakfast 10 unit then 10 unit then 10 unit plus 8 unit long acting okay this is the rapidly acting 10 10 10 and this is the long acting now we should also monitor glucose okay after giving insulin so we should monitor monitor like this okay first we will this is after breakfast okay then after lunch so this is the days monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday so we have to measure the blood glucose after breakfast after lunch and after dinner then fasting blood sugar then again for 15 days okay and then on the basis of that we have to look for the improvement now on the basis of that information we can increase or decrease insulin clear so suppose if uh, abf is increased that is after breakfast is increased then we should increase dose 10 unit in multiple of 3 clear 10 unit plus multiple of 3 now the second indication is diabetic ketocidosis so if increased glucose in blood so the glucose is not going to tissue in diabetes so there will be increased ketone body formation that can cause ketonuria increased glucose in blood increases osmotic pressure that will lead to movement of fluid from tissue to plasma that will lead to dehydration okay and in this condition we give regular insulin through iv root in diabetic ketoacidosis we give regular insulin through iv root you are knowing this is only insulin regular insulin which is given through iv root and this is a drug of choice for diabetic ketoacidosis okay and along with it we can also give rapidly acting insulin through iv root now the third is your safest this is the insulin is the safest antibiotic drug in pregnancy okay so this is the safest antibiotic drug in pregnancy also given for your diabetes mellitus 2 which i started with infection and stress okay best therapy for this type of is insulin therapy infection and stress precipitate hyperglycemia so insulin should be given here also the next is your insulin can cause stimulation of sodium potassium ATPase, so it will increase uptake of potassium okay so it is used for acute hyperkalemia so we have discussed indications that was the first indication is diabetes mellitus 1 okay the second indica indication was diabetes mellitus 2 associated with infection state the third one was diabetic ketosidosis then best uh, uh, drug for your pregnancy hyperglycemia then 
for acute hyperkalemia now root of administration insulin is a peptide hormone so it is not given orally most common root is subcutaneous root okay rate of absorption will directly proportional to subcutaneous fat and most common site for subcutaneous root is your anterior abdomen okay wall anterior abdominal wall leaving peri umbilical area okay because if it is given in uh, peri umbilical area it may goes into muscle and that can cause rapid hypoglycemia okay because muscle is highly vascular so we give we will leave area around peri umbilical area clear now why entry abdominal wall because it can it will provide more surface area okay and drug absorption is faster there and maximum subcutaneous fat is there so these are the points which are related to this here is simple diagram showing your different sites for different days okay we should give insulin at different sites for different days clear and abdominal wall also provide large surface area which provide more sites so it will decrease risk of lipoatrophy and lipodystrophy okay without changing absorption of drug clear the next uh, site is anterolateral part of thigh okay absorption of drug is slowest here so long acting insulin is preferred here in anterolateral part of thigh you can also give in dorsolateral part of arm between deltoid insertion and elbow joint and also given in lateral part of buttocks okay iv root so given through iv root only when we we're going to for treatment of diabetic ketoacidosis clear some insulin is also developed which are given through inhalation route that is afrija okay but it is avoided in case of copd and bronchial asthma insulin implant is also available artificial pancreas is also available okay side effects of the insulin is most commonly hypoglycemia it can cause weight gain because it is increasing glucose uptake it can cause lipoatrophy lipodystrophy decrease potassium and edema okay these are the side effects which i assure you with this so this is about insulin in next video we will discuss about insulin serotox okay thank you